This is a guide for my zero board DIY modding kit for Guitar Hero controllers. You can get it on my Etsy or my direct shop. And if you want to be the first to know about when I get stock in for my sold out products, go to my direct site, scroll all the way down and put your email in this get in stock notifications tab. This is the first place that I post my in stock notifications. So before we start, I want to go over a few tools that are not included in the kit, but you will need to do this mod. You're going to need a screwdriver and some bits. You're going to need T6 bits and T10 bits and a PH1 bit. Uh, this is a kit that has all of those and more included in them. Uh, then you'll also need some flush cutters for cutting wire and some plastic case modding. And you'll also need some wire strippers. These are very important as we will be stripping a lot of wires. Links to all of these will be in the description. Let's start by taking the fretboard, switches, and five 90 degree header pins along with two screws and two washers to start up the fretboard. First thing you want to do is you want to pop them into place. Make sure that the pins are in line with the pads on the board. Otherwise you won't be able to solder them properly. So you can see what I'm doing here. I snap it with my fingers and then I also kind of place them under the fretboard and then push it down on a flat surface to snap them in. Make sure those are all level and good to go. Then start bending the bottom pins down to the pads on the board. Then you're going to want to take some flux and flux up all of the pads to prepare them for soldering. Then just come over with the soldering iron and flood that pad with solder so the pin is connected to the board. Wipe off the residual flux with some paper towel and some isopropyl alcohol. And once that's all cleaned up, we're going to put in the 90 degree pin headers. And you want to line them up with the pin so they're touching just like that. Then once that's done, put a dab of flux onto each of the joints, make sure they're still touching. Then you can see I come in with soldering iron and some solder and I just connect those two joints and kind of pull up with the soldering iron. If you try to pull away on the left or right, that might grab the header and pull it away from the fret pin, which we don't want. Once that's done, inspect the joints, make sure that everything is connected, and then give it a bit of a wipe off with a Q-tip. I would avoid using isopropyl alcohol to clean that up so it doesn't leak inside the switch. Now we have to do the other side, so flux up those pads and solder them together just like you did the opposite end. Be very careful with the iron here, you don't want to accidentally melt parts of the switches that can affect how they work and function. So now I'm going to come in with the flush cutters and just trim off the excess pins. You can see I'm covering it with my hand because those pins will fly upwards. Uh, so to make sure that they don't hit you or anyone else, just cover it up with your hands. And do the same with the plastic feet on the switches on the other end. Alright, now we're going to take the included wire and start separating it so we can strip and solder the wire to the fretboard. So once those are separated, take your wire strippers and start stripping away the wires. These are 28 gauge wire, but I use the 26 gauge slot just because I find that's easier to shear off the wire tubing. Now you're going to see I'm twisting the wire up just to make it easier to slot into the board here. This is stranded wire, so they'll come out frayed like that when you strip them. So make sure you twist them well, otherwise you're going to have a hard time getting them into the holes on the board. And same story here, flux it up, solder each wire. I find it goes easier if I go one by one instead of trying to put all the wires in at once, uh, but you can use whatever method you'd like. 
I'd also recommend that you feed the wire through the top of the board and solder it on the bottom. I find that's a lot easier to manage and route and fit in the shell. Then clean up the residual flux with some IPA and paper towel. Also keep a mental note of what color wire is going to what signal on the board because we'll need to use that later. Writing it down would not be a bad idea either. Then you're going to come in with your flush cutters and trim the excess wire to prevent any bridging between the pads. After that, I come in with a hot glue gun and add some hot glue to the top of the board to provide some strain relief for the wires. Now we're going to pop open the neck and for this World Tour model, that's going to be T10 screws. Make sure you remove all of them. Pop open the neck and you'll see the stock strum board. That's going to be your T6 bit. Remove that and then also use your T6 bit to remove the tap bar. You don't have to remove the tap bar, but I like to actually take it out and not cut anything. Uh, this is adhered to this plastic piece, so you want to kind of twist it back and forth a bit. Eventually it'll come free. Then I pop the plastic piece back in and screw it back in. Next, we're going to install the modded fretboard. The World Tour model will only need one screw and washer, but if you're doing any other models, they will need both of the screws and washers to install. Then after that's secured in place, we're going to have to do a bit of shell modification. You want to snip, snip the tabs that you see me snipping here. Uh, again, this is only for the World Tour models. You don't have to do it for other models. And you can see I also split the cable so it fits better around those standoffs and then you can close up the neck. Now it's time to do the strum board. With this kit we have a zero board, but I also do have a Pi, Pico, and standard strum board kit. Just showing you the similarities here. The only difference being with the Pi Pico version, you'd have to solder all 40 of the pins underneath there. But with a zero board, you don't have to do any of that soldering. So we're just going to use the zero board. Take your two navy strum switches and make sure you put it on the bottom side of the zero board. Then use a piece of tape to keep them in place while we solder them. You want to make sure that they're as flush as possible with the strum board. Then come in with your flux, flux up the pads, and then solder them up. Then clean up the residuals and remove the tape. Now we're going to open up the body of the guitar. Those are again T10 screws and then four Phillips head screws that you can use your PH1 bit on the neck there. You see me unscrewing those now. Once all those are out, you should just be able to pop it open. And the only two things that we need are the start select button and the whammy bar. So we're going to remove everything else. I'm also going to get rid of this RJ11 foot pedal port because I'm going to feed the cable through that. So those are T6 screws as well, so I'll pop that board out. And then you also want to remove the strum board, which is also T6 screws. Then do a test fit with the modded strum board. Just make sure that the strum bar feels good. And as you can see, our start select board is not going to reach. So what we're going to do is we're going to splice it. You can see that there's a lot of excess wire coming from the neck. So I'm just going to take some of that and snip it off with my flush cutters. Then I'm going to remove the start select board just so it's easier to work with. So for the World Tour start select board, the ground pins are going to be these two call one and call two pins. We're going to splice those two together and that will be our ground. The other two start select will go to their start select pins on the zero board. So you see I'm snipping up the wires here. I'm going to use the wire stripper to expose the wires. I think I used the 28 gauge slot for this one, but I think one of them actually cut instead of stripping. So I switched to the 26 gauge slot. Just I'd go with 26 gauge or 24 even if it works for you. Yeah, that one cut off right there. So now I have to use a lower gauge. So you can see I twisted those two call wires together so that will form our singular ground. 
And we're going to splice that together with the wire that we snipped off of our excess neck wire. So flux that up, and then just run a bit of solder over it, and it should have a solid connection. Now normally I'd use some heat shrink to protect these connections, but I'm going to assume that not everyone has heat shrink, so I just use a piece of electrical tape. Doesn't look the best, but it does get the job done. Now we're just going to repeat the process for the other two wires, which are going to carry our start and select signals, and wrap those up as well. Now we're going to take the other end of the wire and join it to the board, making sure that our joined call 1 and call 2 pins go to ground, and then the start select pins can go to start and select respectively. They don't exactly have to match up because we can just change what pin they're bound to in the software later. Flux up those pads and run some solder on them. Snip up the excess wire, make sure there are no bridges. Now we're going to take the wires connected to the fretboard and split them apart and strip them up and get them connected to the zero board. Like I mentioned earlier, make sure you know which colors are going to what signal on the fretboard because that's going to be important now. Then I'm going to solder each of those wires to the appropriate pad on the strum board, making sure that the signals match from the fretboard. Then after that's done, make sure you trim up the excess wire so once again there are no bridges and clean up after yourself. I'm also going to hit those wires with a bit of hot glue just so they have some strain relief. Now during our testing, if your strum bar was feeling a little bit loose, you can add some tape to the bottom of the strum bar where the strum bar meets the switches. As you can see right here, just adds a little bit of thickness to the strum bar, but that can make a big difference in the actual feel of the strum bar. So I'm putting in the zero board here and make sure you test the strum bar, make sure it feels good to you. And then you can stick with the original screws here instead of the included screws because they will fit with the zero board. Then reinstall your start select board as well. Then next we'll move on to the whammy bar. So the only positioning that matters for the whammy bar is the middle pin right there. You see it's labeled ADC. We want that ADC pad to be hooked up to the center wire of the whammy bar. The other two sides of the whammy bar, left and right, they can go to either pad that's next to ADC, which is VCC and ground. Those don't matter. You can hook those up however you want, but you have to make sure that the center wire of the whammy bar goes to that ADC pad. So now as I've done a bunch of times before, I'm going to strip out the wires and solder them up, making sure again that the center pin goes to the ADC pad. Next is the tilts. You want to put them in about a little over halfway and then bend them down so they are parallel with the board. And then you want to push them down towards the bottom of the body so they sit at about a 45 degree angle. You'll see what I'm talking about right here. You can make adjustments to the position after you've soldered it, but it's just easier to get it right here. Uh, then you can make slight adjustments afterwards. Then I taped down the excess wires and hit the remaining wires that I haven't hit with hot glue with some hot glue. Then you want to take your USB-C cable, feed it through that hole that I freed up earlier, tie it in a bit of a knot so it doesn't come out if someone accidentally pulls on the wire. Make sure that it doesn't sit near any standoffs. Pop the back cover on, make sure that there are no bulges, anything like that. And then screw on the front of the body. And to get the front faceplate back on, you might have to release the neck and push it up just ever so slightly so you can slide those tabs underneath the neck. You'll see me do it here in a second. And then you just push the neck back down. But there you go, we're all ready. So now we gotta go program it. 
the first thing you need to do is go to the link in the description to download the Guitar Configurator by Sanjay900. What you want to do is you want to download the one that says latest, has the latest tag. Uh, and if you're on a Mac, you'll download the DMG file. If you're on Windows, you'll download the EXE file. Once that's installed, go ahead and open it up and plug in your guitar. And you should see your guitar show up as Raspberry Pi Pico down here. Make sure that's selected and click continue. Then click start programming. And give it a sec and then click start configuring. Sometimes you'll see this. This is a blank screen with no guitar in the background. This happens sometimes. All you have to do is close out of the configurator and open it back up again. And then you will see your guitar down here. Select that, continue, and now you'll see the guitar here. Now we can program everything. So, first thing we want to do is we want to do the frets. So you're going to hover over this green fret here, click change pin binding, click automatically find pin binding, and then hit the green fret on your guitar. As you can see, it goes away, that message goes away, and you'll actually see the pin that it's bound to right here is marked in green. Everything else is going to be yellow. Click apply changes. Now we're going to do the same thing for red. Click red. Automatically find pin binding. Hit red. Uh, apply changes. Yellow. Automatically find pin binding. And rinse. And repeat. For all of the frets. Uh, same for the strum bar. You want to do strum up and strum down. So go strum up. Automatically find pin binding. Strum up. Apply changes, same for down, and select, and start, and you want to change the pin binding for whammy, and we will calibrate the whammy after we do this. So click automatically find pin binding, wiggle the whammy bar, click apply changes. You can see we can't calibrate the whammy just yet because we need to click right right here. So you click right, you give it a couple seconds, your controller will disconnect and then reconnect. And once it's reconnected, now we can calibrate the whammy. So to calibrate the whammy, hover over the whammy bar, click calibrate whammy, and then don't touch the whammy bar, click OK. Now hold down the whammy bar all the way, and while holding it down, while having it held down, Click OK, and let go. And this dead zone is going to be the amount of distance the whammy has to travel before it activates. So what I usually do is I hold it down just a little bit, just to get a little bit of a dead zone, especially if your whammy bar is sensitive you want to do this. Then while you're holding it there, click OK, and now you can test it. You can see it goes up and down as normal. And you can test your, your dead zone as well. Slowly move the whammy. And you can see that it only activates after a certain point. And click OK. Then click right. And then after it comes back, we're going to configure the tilt. So click configure tilt down here. Change the sensor type to digital. Click on the pin binding. Automatically find the pin binding. Now make sure that your guitar is at uh, like a resting position like you'd be playing. Click automatically find pin binding. Tilt it up. I go all the way to 90 degrees. Uh, mine was found. If you're finding that this message isn't going away, then you need to tilt the sensors up. So it takes less of an angle to activate the tilt sensors. The further down that they point, the more intense the angle is going to have to be to activate tilt. So if it's not activating at all, that means it's way too intense. And you have to push them up from the bottom of the board to activate. But mine are right in the sweet spot, so it sets just fine. After you get it to take the pin binding, click Apply Changes, Close, and then Write one more time. And then you are set. If you're playing Clone Hero or Yarg or Guitar Hero World Tour Definitive Edition on PC, you can just play and it'll work. If you want to use this on Mac or PS3, PS4, PS5, then we have to make a quick change, and I'll show you how to do that right here. You click Change Device Settings. You change the controller output type 
from X input to PS3. And then make sure this still says Guitar Hero Guitar. Close. Right. And give it a second. And it will now work on PS3, PS4, PS5, and Mac. Uh, you can change it back to Windows mode, if you want to call it that, by clicking Change Device Settings, changing this to X Input, and then again, making sure this is Guitar Hero Guitar, Close, Write, and now it'll be set to work on Windows. And that's it. You did it. Congratulations. You modded your first guitar. I'm proud of you. You should be proud of yourself. And now it's time to uh, play the game. <laughs>